Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern OpenGL series. In this lesson, we're going to continue building our intuition about OpenGL. I'm going to go ahead and talk about objects in OpenGL, but not the type that you're used to if you're coming from a Java background where you've been forced objects no matter what you do. We're going to be talking about this in sort of the C-based way because OpenGL, after all, is a C-based programming API. So I want to build your intuition there. And then we're going to talk about something known as the OpenGL context. I'm actually going to show you some source code so you can actually see what that is in an actual implementation of OpenGL called Mesa. And then finally, I'm going to provide some intuition as to the OpenGL state machine, giving you a demo that you can play with. So this is a jam-packed lesson, but I think it'll really help your intuition as you understand OpenGL. And again, taking the time to learn now will make the rest of your OpenGL journey much, much easier to learn. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in first looking at some source code. So here I've got all the source code on a screen here. There's three different files here, object.c, object.h, and main.c. Now, if you have some C programming or you've been following my C programming series, this is going to look relatively familiar. So here's a screenshot with everything on the screen. And I'm just going to take a moment to indent this just so you can break apart the different pieces just a little bit more easy. Now you can still see that everything's still there. So what I want you to take away from this is that OpenGL is a C-based API. And that's for many reasons, one being portability, some being historical, but it means that we don't have objects in the terms that we have C++. So just a refresher of what an object sort of looks like or object-oriented programming in a C library. So I'm going to start you off by looking in the top right corner here at object.h. You'll notice that I have a struct here that I've defined. This object is named program object underscore t. This is just some type that we have created here. It's got some attributes or member variables, if you prefer the name, and some function pointers here, which would be your methods or member functions, depending on what language you use. And the idea, again, is if you look at our implementation object.c, is we would have functions like a constructor here where we init the program object, pass in some object, and set these values, and the function pointers would point to various methods that would do something interesting. So again, to actually use this object, we would have uh, we would create one here, some example, pass in that object to our sort of constructor, and then maybe use these member functions here. I'll go ahead and compile this and run it just so you can see uh, what happens here. So it does, in fact, print hello. If you want to take a moment to pause here and follow this program, you can go ahead and do that. But that's not the main point here. The main point is that, again, we just have structures that OpenGL is sort of passing around and maintaining. So this, I hope, provides a little bit of intuition as to why we have so many of these functions here, where we're doing GL gen buffers, GL bind buffer, GL buffer data and these sort of three functions instead of just having one object created and calling some member function. Now, you're welcome to implement that abstraction if you want for things like vertex buffer objects and so on. And that's probably a good idea for a lot of folks. Of course, there's different trade offs with performance and APIs and these kind of things, uh, but I'll leave that to you. For now, we just want to go for understanding. But I just want to give you an intuition as to why we have these different objects, like again, vertex buffer objects or vertex array objects, and why they are set up this way, because it goes back to a C background. All right, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a little bit of a look at some source code. So I'm going to go ahead and flip to my browser here and search for Mesa source code. Now, Mesa is an open source implementation of OpenGL. It will run on software, for instance. So what I like to do every once in a while, and what we'll do in this series, is just check out a GitHub repository here. And we can do some searching of Mesa code. And in particular, what I want to do, if I hit T and then search for context, is look at the OpenGL context here. And we'll actually see this .h file here. And I'll zoom in a bit. And you'll see that there are some structures related to, say, the context, maybe our configuration, or something we'll eventually talk about called the frame buffer. So it can be helpful to later download this code and sort of grep through and see what struct GL context actually looks like. In fact, if I do a little bit of a control F here, we can see some of these functions here that might be, say, equivalent to a uh, constructor call here, where we're initializing our context. And if we actually go into the equivalent uh, context.c file, which let's go ahead and do context.c, let's go ahead and see if we can find that initialize function here. So I'll go ahead and search for it. 
and here it is. And you can see that we pass in this context and we are setting up all of the attributes of this context. Now the context is in particular the sort of important thing here. So again, if I scroll up to the help here, you can see we initialize a struct here and this includes kind of allocating everything here. Uh, the OpenGL context is the sort of important uh, object or global object that's available and has all the state or stores all the state in OpenGL. So we can go ahead and just scroll through this just very briefly, just so you can see some of the different things that are initialized, some one-time initializations. And this can be a great way to just understand what exactly is going on in OpenGL. Maybe not to start, but later if you want sort of more definitive answers, uh, again, this could be a useful exercise. But again, if your goal is to just work on OpenGL, don't worry, just wait for the next videos uh, in the series where we dive into some coding and then you can come back into this. Okay, now with that said, I've mentioned this idea of our OpenGL context, this sort of massive structure here, the GL context. And again, it's a state machine, which we can just think of as having different knobs and uh, levers that a user would pull here. And that would essentially, or dials or whatever you wanna draw here, that would change state. So it manages our state. And again, what is the actual state that we're managing? Well, that's our pipeline where we start off with the vertex specification, vertex spec, and then we move down our pipeline, the vertex shader through the fragment shader, and then ultimately displaying our actual object in something called the frame buffer. Now, I don't wanna draw the entire uh, pipeline like I did, that's done in a previous video. Instead, I wanna give you intuition about this, the GL context and how it works. And I've actually got a better example than this drawing here that I'm gonna borrow from uh, WebGL fundamentals. So you can go ahead and search for their website and search something like state diagram and you'll get something like this. Now this is done in JavaScript so the source code is going to look a little bit different. But you're given an actual window here that you're drawing. And then you'll see this thing here called the global state which essentially we can think of as like our OpenGL uh, context here that keeps track of all the information. And there'll be some other familiar things here like this vertex array uh, object that keeps track of various attributes. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just zoom in a little bit so you have a chance of seeing this and just walk through, uh, and let me bring this up a little bit more, uh, the actual code here. And he can kind of step one line at a time and see what's going on in OpenGL here. So I'm just going to step through here. We're loading our shaders here, vertex shader and fragment shader, creating the shaders. And as soon as I start creating this shader, you'll notice that I have this shader object here. Again, that would be some sort of struct that was allocated. And then I continue on. You'll see it's actually got the shader source code here. And it's going to compile, keep track of its status. It's true. And we're going to do the same thing for the fragment shader. Walking through here. Let me scroll down the source so you can see. And then eventually we're going to create our graphics pipeline from this shader object and this fragment shader here. So let's go ahead and keep walking on. Here is our actual graphics pipeline. And we attach the vertex shader and the fragment shader here. And then we're going to link these together. So there they are. And then eventually detach these shaders because we don't need them anymore and delete those shaders and now we have this new object that's available, this new graphics pipeline. And this is some OpenGL object that's going to exist for us. Okay, so if I keep walking through here, you'll notice that I then specify some vertices here, and then I start creating some buffers here. Again, here's a vertex buffer object. I'm going to bind to it. And as soon as I uh, bind to it, you'll notice that this link has uh, been noted here, and that's coming from our OpenGL context here, or our global state that's saying, hey, here is the current one uh, buffer that you're allowed active, and you're going to bind to this one here, okay? Uh, and then I'm going to do something similar for our vertex array here shortly, after I get the data into my vertex buffer, you notice that just populated. Um, we'll set up uh, some of our attributes, let me move this uh, out of the way here. So here, we're setting this up here. 
walking through, we have X and Y positions and eventually using our pipeline here. So here it is. Let me pop out here. And as soon as I select this program here, you'll notice that the current program that we have available here for GLU's program, well, it's linking up to this guy here. Okay, so I can move it here. Okay, so that's the state here that's being captured. It's saying, hey, we're linking into this data, rendering in this way, and this is how we're going to interpret the data. And as soon as I hit uh, the next um, advance here, then I'm going to GL draw arrays, which will draw our triangle. So go ahead and play around with this example, and hopefully it'll give you a little bit of an intuition of these things that we've learned about vertex buffer objects, vertex array objects, and so on. And I'm using the triangle example here because that's what we've done so far. And feel free to use the other examples. I think, again, this will give you, again, intuition about how OpenGL works. We have this giant uh, data structure here called the OpenGL context, which has all the state you can think of it like a giant scoreboard at a sporting arena that's keeping track of everything and telling you what's active one vertex buffer at a time one graphics pipeline at a time and one way to look through that data one vertex array object at a time and then when we hit draw we run through our pipeline using our state to generate a shape here so folks, I hope that was useful. I think this is an introduction that I could have used when I was first learning OpenGL. So I'm happy to provide these things to hopefully help you on your OpenGL journey. That said, if you found this helpful, make sure to subscribe so that when we dive into some more code in future lessons, you'll be able to see those lessons. Hit the like button if this was helpful and comment below so I can get more feedback on ideas or things that uh, you might have trouble understanding and we'll create some more videos for that. With that said, folks, thanks for your time and we'll see you in the next one.